most of your longevity and lifespan is determined by epigenetics. That refers to your lifestyle, habits, and the environment that you're exposed to. Hey, my name is Simland, and in this video, I'm going to tell you the five habits that shorten your lifespan. Do it. So, number one is going to be eating too late. So, uh, this refers to the concept of time restricted eating and circadian biology. So, we know that the circadian rhythm mismatches are linked to many of these chronic diseases like heart disease, cancer, obesity, diabetes, and Alzheimer's. On the flip side, confining your eating window in some shape or form with time restricted eating and intermittent fasting can have a protective effect against those things and even reverse some of those conditions. I personally think that it doesn't really matter if you eat like very early or if you eat slightly later, but you definitely want to avoid eating immediately before bed. Let me explain. The reason has to do with melatonin production and all these other processes that are supposed to occur in your sleep. Melatonin is considered the sleep hormone, but it also governs pretty much all the other longevity pathways and processes. The first few hours of going to bed is where you produce the most melatonin and that is also where you produce the most growth hormone and other of these uh, anti-aging uh, functions. Eating too much food immediately before bed can take away your energy from those processes and it can also reduce your sleep quality. If you have like a massive meal that raises your heart rate, raises your blood sugar levels and makes you sweat or raises your body temperature in some way, then it's going to reduce your sleep quality. And uh, with uh, bad sleep quality, you're not getting that good benefits from these functions that melatonin is going through. There's the, also the thing that melatonin actually makes you somewhat insulin resistant. So melatonin binds to the pancreas and prevents you from producing insulin. So this is the one of the biggest reasons why you don't want to be eating in the evening and you don't want to ever eat like in pitch black darkness. Your body also recharges its antioxidant defense in your system with NADPH. If you're eating, then your body is in a slight energy surplus in that moment of time and it will also take away energy from the recharge of NADPH and NAD. So what I recommend to do is to not eat anything at least three to four hours before bed. That's the minimum and optimally even like five hours. But of course, that's not feasible in most cases. If you have to eat something like an hour before bed or something, yeah, just keep it smaller, keep it uh, lower glycemic and don't consume like super large amounts of carbohydrates because melatonin, it does make you insulin resistant. Diabetes. Number two is going to be sitting all day. We know that sedentary behavior is associated with all cause mortality and pretty much all the other chronic diseases as well whereas exercising and staying physically active does the opposite if you are sitting in a computer chair or sitting in a car the vast majority of the time most hours of the day then that does pretty much uh, age you faster and increases your risk of mortality from all causes so what i like to do is use a standing work desk if possible i like to take many movement breaks i like to break up long periods of sitting with walks stretching or just jumping jacks whatever it is just to keep your body moving walking is a great way to counteract sitting but if you let's say sit five or six hours in a row then uh, going for walks isn't gonna you know make up to all of it it's more effective to have more consistent periods of movement throughout the day than to be sedentary all the time and then do like a very long workout session or something like that so it's important to have like you know every hour or so have at least a few minutes of movement whether that be just walking stretching or just standing up even for a few minutes do it number three is going to be phone scrolling before bed if it has a blue light filter on then it's fine but the artificial blue light like the blue and green wavelengths from the smartphone or computer screen or TV or the ceiling lamp or whatever it is that can reduce your melatonin production and with lower melatonin levels you like a worse time to fall asleep you have less melatonin for conducting these repair processes in your sleep and a blue light exposure at night is also actually associated with chronic diseases like diabetes, obesity, and Alzheimer's. Wear things like blue blocking glasses, use different kinds of blue light filters on your smartphone, and that's gonna be fine. You know, I would still like try to limit the scrolling of the phone even if you have the blue light blockers uh, on, because you know, it's psychologically is a bad habit, uh, but it's not gonna age you, it's not gonna make you age faster. But the blue light itself exposing your eyes to the blue light before bed 
because it you know suppresses melatonin and reduces the sleep quality then uh, that definitely uh, ages you uh, faster number four is going to be restricting your sleep whether that be like uh, waking up too early going to bed too late staying up past midnight having irregular sleeping patterns restricting your sleep in any way is going to have a negative effect on your longevity body composition and overall health sleeping less than five hours increases your risk from all causes by 15 percent and uh, yeah just chronic sleep deprivation catches up on you it may not increase your risk of mortality but it definitely ages you in multiple ways like it ages you in terms of your metabolic health it ages you in terms of your skin quality and skin health it ages you in terms of your brain function because you can't really like assess or you can't track your brain aging as easily as you can do it with your uh, blood sugar levels for example but uh, yeah just uh, restricting your sleep reduces the quality of your life and ages you faster in multiple ways on average you want to get at least six to eight hours per night as an adult but optimal i would say seven to eight or even eight and a half hours in some cases and last number five is going to be mouth breathing so humans we are supposed to breathe through the nose most of the time of course there are some cases where you have to breathe through the mouth like when you're exercising or if you're doing something very strenuous but you know when you are breathing through the mouth you are stimulating stimulating the sympathetic nervous system that is going to keep your body in a state of uh, fight or flight it raises your cortisol and stress levels and it actually uh, deprives your brain from oxygen so if you're sleeping with your mouth open and you're breathing through the mouth then uh, that can cause like sleep apnea that definitely uh, deprives your brain of the oxygen during your sleep and damages the brain ages the brain and reduces your overall sleep quality to fix that you need to teach yourself how to breathe through the nose all the time and this is something that many people don't pay attention to at all and they don't even know that they are breathing through the mouth and if you are stressed out all the time then chances are you are subconsciously without knowing it breathing through the mouth all the time if you want to reverse and slow down aging then uh, email me the word health to info at seamland.com and I'll send you the details. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.